Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Beyond Second Cognition. I'm Endo Beale. The topic of this discussion is the ambush of spirit. This is probably going to be one of the most important videos for those who have been reading the books and following the series and doing the work that we have produced in a while. I want everyone to listen to this very carefully and understand what is being related. I'm going to use the term spirit in this context, but you need to realize that spirit in the manner in which Don Juan used it was a reference to the Soika consciousness. At that time, the word Soika hadn't been created and he used the vernacular that was available at the time. So when he says spirit, you can translate that to mean Soika. And I'm going to paraphrase a little bit and then I'm going to explain. In the Castaneda books, Don Juan stated that a warrior knows that he is waiting and he knows what he is waiting for. Now, in the context of our work, you all know that you're waiting for the second cognition. You've been working, cleaning house, making room, and looking for that second cognition shift of awareness. The other thing that I want to pull from Don Juan, I'm paraphrasing this, is, is something along the lines that you can see spirit like a winged bird waiting in ambush. And one day, when it finds the correct opportunity, it just swoops down, and there it is. This is how the second cognition transition occurs. As first cognition human beings, we feel that we have to strive for something, that we have to keep doing things, that there's some magical switch we turn on if we can just find the right combination that's going to give this to us. If you look at all these mystical traditions, that's kind of the way they teach their garbage. Now, Don Juan also taught about a process that he called recapitulation. And although cell talk is not exactly the same process, in the end result through the self-analysis and, and coming face to face with what Young might have called your shadow self, admitting all the things that you do and making peace with them and laying the shadow to rest, so to speak, is sort of like this recapitulation process. It, it's the carrying out the internal garbage, the beliefs, the, the bad habits from the hapim and, and things of that nature. This is where your work comes in, is cleaning this house, you know, it's like you're, you're, you're a homeowner or a house owner looking to clean it up for a new resident to move in. In this case, the resident is the soika sentience after you can evict the former tenant being the hive residual habits, the hapim virus's habits. But because we have this desire based on all these mystical studies that, that hang that carrot in front of our eyes that keep us chasing the carrot, we keep striving. Now, we've stated in the books and videos that the Soika process has nothing to do with thinking. Thinking is the realm of the ego. Thinking is the realm of the first cognition. Yet, we all run ourselves in circles thinking about what do I need to do? Do I need to cross my eyes or hold my mouth right or smile right? Or, or what combination is going to give me this second cognition stuff? So, we think and we think and we plot and we plan. And it seems the more we think and ponder on this stuff, the more elusive the second cognition becomes. And this is true, and I'll tell you why. You're trying to use a first cognition process called thinking to reach something that doesn't require thinking to attain. As long as you are thinking, you are exercising the habits of the virus. You get the anxiety and you get the frustration because you keep thinking, what am I not doing right? Well, the biggest thing you're not doing right is you're thinking about it too much and you're striving. Now, those of you that have come up through these mystical traditions, how much or how many times have you heard them say, well, you have to strive for perfection or you have to strive for purity and things of that nature. It's the striving itself that prevents you from getting where you want to go. When Don Juan says that a warrior knows what he's waiting for, he's stating that we know the consciousness is there. 
and we know that it's also going to appear, but it's not going to appear through force. And if you look at your thinking mind, you are trying to force into being something that cannot be forced from a first cognition standpoint. You cannot think second cognition consciousness and awareness into being from a first cognition working standpoint using the thinking. Over the years when I was working with crew, and this used to drive me absolutely batshit. They told me, you have to relax into it. Well, I was like all you guys are. I, I wanted to attain it. I knew it was there. You know, what am I not doing right? What do I need to do right to make this thing happen? And I got told on more than one occasion, you know, that you need to relax into it. I'm saying that doesn't make any fucking sense. I didn't understand what the hell they were talking about. So I'm trying to give a more definitive explanation about what relaxing into it means. All of this thinking and this striving and this desire, it, it's a lot of first cognition desire, sort of like what the last video said on this crave for superpowers or whatever. In the first cognition world, we have to think in order to make things happen. We, we are very action oriented based on our material incarnation. We feel that we have to do something to make something happen. We don't very often see things come our way without us working for it. And this is exactly how we approach the Soika work. We feel that we have to work for it. And, and yes, we do on, on the house cleaning side of it. But so far as trying to force, um, use force to bridge that gap between first cognition and second cognition, force is only going to stand in your way. You cannot work it from a first cognition standpoint into a second cognition realization. You're waiting for that bird called spirit to swoop in and ambush you when the opportunity is right. And when the opportunity is right, number one, meaning that you're not overthinking it, you're not sweating, you're not going through a bunch of anxiety about what do I need to do? When you stop doing, when you relax and know that it's coming, then one day an opportune moment's going to come when enough of the house cleaning's done and all of a sudden you're going to have this shift. So you need to relax about this. You need to know that it's there, just like Don Juan said, you know, a warrior's waiting and he knows what he's waiting for. Each of you know what you're waiting for. So in the meantime, go through the house cleaning process. Go through, you know, ex expanding your knowledge. You know, be human. You know, in one of these days, the Soika aspect's going to sneak up on you and then all of a sudden you're going to be there. That's how it happened with me. You know, I can't point to a definitive instant where there was something that I did that brought about my shift in awareness. Each of you knows along the way you get little shifts, you know, and each little shift that brings you the aha moments and broadens your perception, they're kind of working up to the, the larger second cognition shift. But even when you reach that second cognition shift, it's not a goal. And this is another way that we fail because we are so fucking goal oriented. We keep looking to arrive at a certain place. Well, when you get to that certain place, there's another goal right ahead of you. So each of your minor aha moments along the way that help expand your awareness are a building process. But so far as thinking of the second cognition as a goal and striving for that goal, you keep erecting walls that prevent you from realizing what you will realize because you're trying to apply a first cognition thinking process to a goal oriented first cognition perception and it just keeps pushing the goalpost away from you. You can't reach it because it's not a goalpost and you can't cross it because everything you're using, every tool you're utilizing called thinking and anxiety and frustration only pushes it farther away. So you have to just relax and, and stop thinking about it so far as the striving aspect goes. You are a warrior. You are waiting and you know what you're waiting for. Being frustrated and anxious over it because you don't happen to see it right this minute doesn't mean that it isn't coming or it isn't there. So you need to relax about it. You need to quit being anxious and frustrated and fed up and 
trying to figure out how to tick that lock to find that little piece, the, the right thing to do, because this is not about doing, this is about allowing. You have to allow it to work, and you can't allow it to work as long as you're trying to force it. And the mental process of trying to force it is exactly what keeps it away from you. So live your life, be human, you know, do your house cleaning, you know, make, make room for the new renter, so to speak, but quit striving for it because all the first cognition effort and energy you put into it is not going to get you there. It's just going to keep you locked in the corral. So know that it's coming, know that it's there, know that when the time is right, you're going to get your shift and everything else is just house cleaning, getting ready for the new tenant if that makes sense. I mean, it's, it's about as simple as I can make it. But this is what we do because of our entire species indoctrination. We feel that we have to put forth all this effort before something happens for us. And the only efforts you have to put forward to it is getting rid of the first cognition habits and thinking is one of the big ones. Thinking and goal orientation. And, and as long as you keep that goal concept in mind as long as you keep thinking and pushing and trying to find the right combination you're just pushing it away from you so the best thing i can tell you is don't worry about it relax into it and this is what crew was trying to tell me all those years and i was too fucking hard-headed to understand and they didn't explain it to me like i'm trying to explain it in in this video and i'm hoping this gives all of you folks some guidance quit pushing so hard you're not going to force it into being you have to allow it to happen, and the only way it's going to happen by allowance is if you relax into it. And then one day, that bird of spirit, or your soy sentience, will swoop in and ambush you, and all of a sudden you'll have it. And that's how it works. And I know it's totally counterintuitive to how we think and how we function as human beings. But this is what you have to do, is you have to allow it. So for those of you doing the work, stay the course. And don't give up on yourselves.